Hello and welcome to my recording session where I am showing you interesting Java patterns which is last episode for the design patterns will be and who am I? My name is Alexander, I am a free freelancer out of Germany here you have my contact information what kind of services I do provide, software development, creating unit tests, requirements engineering, advising of companies, uh, then I support, uh, I provide workshops about different kind of topics, all about software quality and software development, and I help people to get hired at German companies, so if you're interested, just hit me at one of the emails or contact information and I hopefully will be able to help you. So, today we discuss another pattern, which is Memento, and how it works and what it's all about. The book itself tells us that this pattern can be used to retrieving previously stored state so it kind of inter interesting to observe so benefits of memento it keeping safe the state external state uh, from the key of objects and keep and maintain the cohesion so let me uh, say the goals of memento saving the important state of system key object Maintaining the key object encapsulation. Yeah, drawbacks of Memento. Memento is used to save the state. Drawback to using Memento is that saving and restoring state can be time consuming. Uh, in Java system, consider using serialization to save a system state. So serialization means you creating a file and store it on file system or else. So, what I have drawn here, for example, what is Memento as a simplified exam pattern? You have kind of database container, kind of, so to speak. You have a client which writes and reads from the database. And what about particularly interesting about this client, it store the state of the database in one special instance and if if the client call on itself the rollback method or function better to say then it gets hold of a previously stored state and then populate the database with a previously stored state this is how it works in pretty simplified form the code which I will show you first, I will show the diagram which I got from the tutorials point site. Basically, it is site uh, where uh, I have got the code for the Memento example. Tutorialspoint.com design patterns topic. And how it works, you have your organizer which use Memento to store the state and caretaker use it to get the state from the memento and be able then to use it so let's just look at, at the code basically I need to clean it first of all I make sure that, that I can create the memento itself the organizer object the caretaker object and let's look it up caretaker object I can add the state, I can get the list, actually memento list I'm getting from the memento, I'm putting the index and getting the element from the memento list. Then I have organizer and you see it have save state to the to memento, so I can save state to memento. And yeah, well, how my test what my test does, it has the show usage of the Memento. This is basically this client. Let me go through it. So I'm setting the state through organizer object. One time, second time, and now I have a third time. So 
Actually, I'm sa I'm saving the state to yeah to the memento. In the memento itself, it has a list. It has a list. Uh, oh, actually, ah, here I have my ah, it's actually a pretty simple one. So I have here my string as a state. I provide my state, and then it's stored here as a string. Cool. Uh, yeah, basically I'm storing the strings. Yeah, it's pretty simplified example. So I'm saving the state. And then what I do next then because organizator the organizator class new memento yeah. Okay, he, it creates the instance of new, yeah, new instance. Have uh, access to the instance of a me memento. So basically, I'm doing this job, and and the state free. I'm getting hold of the state. So basically, starting from from the state two, I save it, save state to memento. Now I do the same with the state free, save state to the memento. Here at state 4, I am getting the state which I have in my organizer object. It will should be 4. And then I am saving it to the memento. State from... Ah, actually here. So, basically, first state showed. So I'm showing the state. I'm setting the state one, and I'm showing the state which I have set. The second state I have stored to the memento. The third state I'm stored to the memento. The fourth state I I set the fourth state at organizator, and now I'm showing here the state which I have previously stored from memento. It should be two basically. And then I'm doing the same once again, once again, and here I provide the index, so two and three probably should be. Let me just look it up. So now we have the order, so current state is one, current state is two, saving to memento, current state is three, saving it to memento, and current states for getting it from memento and it shows that state from memento is 4 then the first save state is 2 second save save state is 3 and this is how actually memento works and basically it allows you to have uh, backwards storage of your actions which you have done to your objects but you need to think about the container. Let's go to the drawing board. So as I explained earlier, you have some sort of a database from which you read and write. And then you have another container where you store always the previous state of the database, so to speak. And with that, what I can additionally add, uh, so the book, what the book tells us had first design patterns pretty cool book just reference to the book i need to do it and what this book provide to, to me the data which i understand that memento keeps keep the saved state from the external from from the external objects and it keeps the key objects data encapsulated and provides easy to implement recovery capability if you need to recover to, to the previous state. But major drawbacks are that you need to have enough memory, large enough memory to store it in memory. And it is recommended to store it on the in the on the file storage. It can be the cloud or it can be your local hard drive. It should be stored outside of your memory in Java. 
and my personal view on it um, well it is useful I mean if you have things like if you think about Photoshop I hope you know such program Photoshop which allow you to edit pictures you can always go back in history and it's basically pretty obvious that you always can go go back into the history and recover from the state which you have stored previously but but the big uh, yeah big problem with that uh, you, you should have enough memory and basically if you far 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 from the state which you previously used for like I don't know the state where you I mean you have I don't know 100 steps and 101 for that you don't have enough memory and then it will be basically not stored if you do, done the implementation wrong so basically maybe then you should think about okay how much memory does user actually have and when you need to store your state into the files and then when you load the state the system just waits before it can represent the data which you previously stored in the memento so let me do an additional slide so uh, once again you have your database it's not an actual database but rather simplified representation a container where you have your data uh, you read from the data you make safe operations you have your client basically the client which writes and it but you need to store the previous state previous state and that previous state is indexed you know when you know how exactly far you can go from previous state you get the previous state and using write operation you recover back the state of the database so to speak and major advantage basically you have such option actually and disadvantage you need to have kind of storage for your data which it should be a cloud uh, so you can save it on cloud if you have an access to it or you save it on your local hard drive or maybe kind of distributed systems which you have on your ne ne enterprise network if you have enterprise um, environment the, and this is kind of what I understand about Memento so it is kind of practical because I mean any any program which have some edit insert update method probably should have such capability that you can always go back question is always how far you can you should go back and does it cause any potential problems for another uh, containers which you store some data but this is a then discussion for another video and I would say this is it with the design patterns from the head first book if you say I'm not satisfied what which I have shown which I have seen earlier you can always take this book design patterns elements of reusable object oriented software it's a classical book from the past 1994 actually uh, I think I was like 10 years old uh, yeah so so <laughs> this book is pretty old but it is not old in speak in the terms of uh, software engineering um, one caution about this book it has pretty tough language 
if you are as for example C++ developer you would probably have no problem to understand the ideas from this book uh, if you buy it on the CD you will actually have examples in C++ of each of the design pattern but basically my opinion why I took head first approach I thought it is more practical one and I am all about practicality, practicality in my software projects and I kind of avoid the abstract stuff when people start start explaining abstract terms using QML diagrams and trying to speak too abstractly about the subject because languages modern languages Java C++ PHP Perl Python and, and other fun functional languages too they all about the code eventually so it doesn't matter how good your diagram is if you cannot put it in your code or explain it in in the code you your diagrams have zero worth to me so I say code first but don't try to use diagram tools to explain how it works but don't do the backward stuff because yeah I know the tools which can generate from UML the code it's kind of useful at some point of at some projects but I say having ability uh, to write the code and then express from code the diagram is pretty powerful. I learn a lot from reading the book Head First Design Patterns. It's kind of ref refreshing to me because I done previously, it's like many years ago. Um, yeah, I think with my uh, small introduction to the design patterns which you got from me you be a you should be able to go further because design patterns are uh, actually there are more design patterns so to speak now let me try and to draw new to, to have new new um, if it me if it's allowed me to create new Should be able uh, have to just new new page. Yeah. So basically, there exist um, another design patterns, uh, enterprise and Java Java enterprise patterns. I think I sorry, enterprise patterns. And then exist uh, um, game developer patterns, mobile mobile developer patterns. Then there exi exists solid patterns from Robert Setzel Martin, which is a uh, great. Well, beyond my <laughs> experience pretty experienced guy and then other patterns which you probably see in the wild and other patterns there are some conferences groups and google it because I want, don't want to mention any of the group and just just is this is kind of nature of software engineering it's always in, in constant change but if you're interested to speak with me about your project i will be gladly hopefully to help you and yeah this is it for me as always my slogan design patterns are good tool which you can apply if you have the case where it makes sense because in some point of project because many times you don't 
need to apply design pattern just use common sense and this is what I want to tell you about design pattern there are good tools but they, if you use the tool in the wrong way you not only decreasing the productivity of your whole team you can possibly uh, have developing pretty damaging um, architecture which not allow you to be flexible enough to maintain it or even to to advance it further my best advice having written a lot of unit tests unit test should be the tool which you allow you to measure the quality of your architecture software architecture because if you if you write a test for one of the design patterns and i think it was the case of the observer pattern it was kind of difficult to write it pretty cleanly i mean the test for observer design pattern and some patterns which were mentioned at the in the book i didn't show you because one pattern i can speak about like visitor it pretty um destroys many all of all of the rules which you have in design patterns so there always should be kind of sensitivity of maturity of the developer which try to implement the design pattern but if you're new to programming and so my workshop which you currently watching i say make sure that you understand the aspects of your programming language and apply design patterns where actually make sense to you i, I should repeat it because some people <laughs> don't watch it uh, many times enough my my design patterns but i say apply common sense and use design patterns only where it makes sense don't use it over, over don't overuse it this is what my final message to you and with that i conclude this workshop and that's it thank you and see you on the net bye bye